In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the other form of audio rate modulation available in particle, and that's uh, frequency modulation. As I said before, you can't achieve frequency modulation by just connecting two audio rate oscillators together because the modulation inputs won't accept the different sample rates. So we've got to look somewhere else to get our uh, frequency modulation fix. And uh, that comes in the unlikely guise of the drum synthesizer. So I'm just going to set up the uh, usual patch and then I'll load in uh, an instance of the drum synthesizer that I've already initialised. So let's just have a guided tour of this uh, rather daunting looking unit. Uh, basically what you've got is the top section has three separate audio generators. The first two generate sine waves and the third one generates filtered noise. The uh, frequency of oscillator 1 is variable. Okay. The sections down below are all identical and they basically provide a simple attack decay envelope for each of the three tone generators. There you go, there's the attack and the decay. Longest decay time is about five seconds from memory. And then below that you've got um, a control called rate, which is quite an odd little thing. What it does is it divides down the time base of the envelope so the higher it goes, the shorter the total time of the envelope becomes, but it still retains its shape. That's really important for drums, because obviously you want really, really snappy envelopes. Uh, it's less important for this application, but it does have its uses. There's also a delay, so you can offset the envelopes from note on. Uh, and the attack level basically gives you a mixer where you can mix the three sound sources together. So there we just hear them all. The uh, noise is set up to give a click of kinds. I'll turn that down because we don't need it. Oscillator 2 is a uh, fixed ratio of the frequency of oscillator 1. So there you go, we are set that to uh, an octave and a fifth or higher. So oscillator 2 is always relative to the pitch of oscillator 1. And there's also this control which um, uses the envelope as a, a pitch modifier. And it's bipolar so it works in both directions. But the uh, most interesting parameter for us is this one, oscillator mod. What this does is it allows one oscillator to modulate the frequency of the other. And as you can hear, as we deepen the modulation, the effect increases. You get different sounds by modulating the different oscillators. And you can also cross-modulate them. So your modulation can be modulating your modulator. Uh, that can end up with some quite chaotic sounds. Um, so if you want to do melodic FM, it's best just um, modulate one oscillator at a time. The cross modulation is useful for special effects. So you've got something that's um, almost bell sounding like there. But the um, thing that makes it really useful now is if we click this box here, we override the frequency settings of oscillator 1. And instead, it's now synchronized to the note values coming in from the uh, mixtical en engine. And 
we have all the usual pitch offsets that you have in other oscillators. So inside this oscillator, as well as making drum sounds, you have a basic, what I would call a two operator FM synth. Now this tutorial is probably too short to show all the possibilities because there are too many. But I'll just show what um, the effect of some of the parameters is. If we reduce the rate of the first oscillator, that's quite useful if you want to make a sort of strike noise at the beginning of a tone. Hopefully, despite the compression on YouTube, you can hear some of the detail of the sound and some of the extra tones that are coming through because of the frequency modulation. Now, of course, the desynth is open to modulation by control units like all the other uh, audio generators in Particle. And uh, I think just about every uh, control on the desynth is available for modulation. So if I just do a simple thing, I'll set up an LFO here turn it down and also turn the amplitude right down because the uh, controls are very sensitive on the D synth. And what we'll do is we'll hook that LFO so it modifies the frequency of the second uh, tone generator. So that's somewhere down here, frequency 2 I'm looking for. There we are. See what I mean about it being sensitive? Scale it right back. It's turning down some more. But you can add some very subtle movement to the sound this way. That's about right. sounds a little bit thin, but we can uh, double that up. So let me just copy that to the clipboard. And then I'll add another instance of the desynth. And uh, obviously a junction so I can tie them both together. Connect the two. Okay, now that second is just making the uh, standard sound at the moment, but if we copy in from the clipboard, then I've just copied the parameters from the first to the second. And there you go, we can thicken that sound up just by detuning them against each other. But if I have to set them an octave, then we've got quite a big sound. Big ranging sound, anyway. Just need to change the levels here a bit. And now just chord that and see what it like sounds like as a sort of uh, keyboardy type voice. I'll just put depth of two on a thing. That's there we go. And if we uh, thicken it more with some chorus. There's a kind of FM keyboard sound there going on. Just add some reverb to smooth everything out. Uh, 
And as you can hear, that's quite a complex, detailed little sound for very little effort, really. And probably not the sort of thing you'd expect to look for uh, a drum synth to deliver. But there it can. One more thing, by um, re special request, really. Um, you can make hybrid sounds using the wavetable, the general MIDI wavetable. So if I just add, I'll add an envelope, an amplifier, because um, the wavetable can be a bit quiet on its own, up against the synth. And then add the uh, wavetable tone generator, and just connect everything up to the junction. Remembering, of course, that we need to connect the amplifier, not the wavetable. And uh, let's put some strings over the back of this. Just lift them up an octave. see why we need the amplifier. Let's lift that a bit. Okay now the settings for all the amplitude controls in uh, the wavetable voice is a hardwired in the DLS so you can't really do much about the, uh, say the release times. But we can do something about the attack uh, because we can control this amplifier with a uh, control envelope. Just press the wrong button there. Control envelope, not an amplifier. And then if we just connect this to the uh, amplifier in front of the wavetable generator and uh, give it a, a bit of a slow attack. As I say, we can shape the start of the sound at least a little bit. So there we've got quite a sort of complex keyboard compad sound, combining the uh, general MIDI wavetable with uh, an FM keyboard sound provided by the drum synth. I will post this file uh, separately. Uh, the uh, URL should be in the sidebar showing up about now. And uh, you can pick over it for yourself and see what uh, sounds you can find doing uh, FM on a drum synth. It's also worth exploring the presets in the uh, Bells, Arps and Metals pack because about 90% of those voices were done exclusively using the drum synth. Thank you.